Let me show you how you can use the has selector to create this sliding animation behind the pricing cards. Last week on Twitter, I saw an animation on some pricing cards. So today, when on iCode this, we had this challenge, I thought to give it a try and see how I could animate the card selection going from this one to this one when it is selected. So let me show you how I did it. Here is the code for the card. As you can see, I use Tailwind, but this is mostly to style the card and style the label. For those of you who don't know, you can style a label based on the input that it's selected. In this case, I used two inputs with type radio because when one is selected, we want to deselect the other. So we couldn't use a checkbox. And basically inside of the label, I have the entire markup. And also inside the label, we have this div with a class of checkmark, which has an icon inside it. And by default, it doesn't have a background color and the border is gray, as you can see. And in the CSS, when the input is checked, we want to get the label that it's right next to it and the checkmark div, we want to set the background to be Rebecca purple and the border color again to be Rebecca purple. So basically this code will turn on the checkboxes here. But next, for this sliding animation behind the cards, that was a bit trickier to do. So here inside the form, we have a div with a class of special. And of course, we have the two sections, which are these pricing cards. And next to them, we have a div, which is pretty much this border. Because in our section, we have the label, which has a background of white, it covers it. So if I would remove the white background here, you could see the box. And this box is positioned absolute inside this special div. And it's taking up half of its size. And because the two labels have kind of the same elements inside, they're basically the same height. And we're just hiding this div by applying Z index minus 10 on it. And we're using isolate on the div because I want this to be isolated inside this div. So by adding the label's background color back, it kind of creates this effect of like having a border because the section has a padding. So the label only takes up the space inside of the section, which means it leaves room for this div to show around it. But now for the magic part, here we have this CSS where we're using the new has selector which says something like this. If the special div, which is the parent of all of these, right? Here is it, the special div. If this special div has a section that has the input checked and we are requiring the second section because by default, this div is already on the top. So only when the second section's input is checked, we want it to move to the bottom. So when the second section inside of the special div has an input that's checked, we want this pretty element, which is our pretty div, purple, of course, to move down. How much? Well, considering that this is half, we want to move it down 100%. So that's what we do. We translate it 100%. And we have transition on it from Tailwind. So it will animate nicely going down. And when this div is not checked because of this rule, then this line of code won't be applied. So it will go back up. I hope I made it pretty clear. If not, let me know in the comment section and I'll explain more. But now what happens if let's say we want to make another section because I don't know, we have a lifetime plan. Let me write the code quickly. All right. So now I added another tier lifetime with some dummy text in it. And as you can see, because this takes up half of the size, it kind of covers the second tier as well. So we would have to change this to be one third of the size. And when we select the second tier, it should go 100% down and it should work well. But if we select the third one, well, it will go up. Why? Because we don't have a rule for it to, well, do something when the third one is selected. So we would have to create another rule and when the third one is selected, we want it to go 200% down. So now, if we press the third one, it will go down 200%. So 
But of course, this only works if the elements have the same height. I still need to figure out a way to have it work no matter the height of the element. We might need a bit of JavaScript for that. If you have an idea of how we could do that, let me know and I'll make another video covering that as well. But yeah, this is pretty much it. And it's a pretty cool effect thanks to the new has selector, which allows us to target an element which is outside. As we have here a checked input, we want to style something outside of it, the special class, and well, inside the special class, right? So pretty much a sibling to the input, sort of. If we go here again in the DOM, so whenever this input is selected, we're styling the grandfather's other son, right? If that makes sense. Or you could say we're styling its uncle, which is something we couldn't do before in CSS. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comment section if you liked this format of me explaining some piece of code. Also, let me know if you didn't like it so I can do better in the future. And I'll see you in the next one.